I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and you'll need to hold on to your seats for a wild ride. We have 5v5 ladder action today, we have, that's what, around 2 o'clock? Okay, this is team lunchtime, and this is team supper time. I know, 2 o'clock's quite a late lunch, but you're just going to have to live with it. Maybe you had a lot of work in the morning and couldn't take your lunch break until late, I don't know. Either way, let's go and meet the two teams. Starting for Team Lunchtime, this is Storm Lantern. He is 1800 rated and Cybran. He is in Fecal Brown. Behind him, in what I expect to be the first of the air positions, we have Raelia. He is 2100 rated and he is Eon in Mauve. In the other air position, this is Loxpuig who I'm going to call Lox. I've been playing some Valheim recently and we've just got onto the planes and fighting some Lox, so I'm just going to think of this guy as a big fluffy cow fella. Moving on to the other flank, we have Protect who is 2200 rated, he is Seraphim and he is in red. And last but not least, at the front for Team Lunchtime, we have Judoka1972 Noob, who is 1900 rated, and he is UEF in Burgundy. Now, on to Team Supper Time. On this flank position, we have Ithilis, who is 1500 rated, and Eon, and he's in Mucus Brown. Behind him, in the first air position, we have Resistance, 2100 rated and Cybran in yellow. In the second air position for Team Supper Time, meet Jagged Appliance. He is 2000 rated and UEF, and he's in orange. And on the other flank for Team Supper Time, we have Luca. 2100 rated and Cybran, and he is in lime green. And last but not least, in the forward position for Team Supper Time, we have Karateka, who is. Oh, I just wondered, is that Karate Car or something like that? Either way, we'll call him Kara this game and not worry about that. He is 1800 rated, he is also Cybran, and he is in grass green. So we have one of each race on the team lunchtime plus an extra UEF and then we have three Cybers, a UEF and an Eon on the other team. Now a quick look at the map. Holy cow, that's a lot of reclaim. That's tens, hundreds of thousands of reclaim and it's all in these rocks which are literally everywhere. That is insane. Look at that field of mass for our commanders to pick up. And there's also not an insignificant amount of mexes. These two bays render a sort of choke point here, but not really. So it's quite an open map, I would say, as things stand. Although we do have five players, so this could be quite a tight front line if all the forward players come forward. Meanwhile, we have a bomber out from Luca pootling around above the base of Storm. Is it going to claim this expanding NG? Yes, it is. Nice pickup. It's also got something else, but we have Inties out from Storm to defend. However, that bomber gets another NG, and it is sensibly picking up the expanding NGs, so that's going to slow down Storm getting out to all his mixes. Over here, on the other side, we have a drop from Resistance, who has landed a little trio of NGs and immediately putting up factories and radar. That's quite nice. Wonder if Protect will spot it. Storm is raiding around the coastline here. There's a couple of defensive tanks out from Luca though, and so I don't think he's going to see a lot of damage. And Luca has another bomber out, 
which could be pretty nice. He's keeping it carefully back. He lost the first one to Storm's Inties. So we do have engineers from Protect expanding out here, but they might not know about this drop yet, which has already got a land factory built, another on the way. Engineers coming out first, because of course this reclaim, every bit of reclaim that Resistance can grab from this side is a bit of reclaim that Team Lunchtime aren't getting, and so much of this early game is going to be fueled by these insane amounts of reclaim. That raid from Storm continues to push in. I see Jagged out with a drop. Do you think he's going to go for the same thing as Resistance? So he's got this little drop coming out here. Nope, he's just landing to pick up Reclaim over on this side. And possibly to prevent Storm or Raelia doing the same thing as Resistance did. Ah, we can see now on the minimap that Protect has discovered Resistance's base. But he's only got one tank here and there's three factories and PD almost finished. So... Despite this reasonable swarm of tanks coming in from Protect, I think Rezzy is going to keep a hold of this area. And yeah, look at that. The PD and the tanks are just eating through this little attack. Yuka pushing in on Storm with Karateka's assistance here. Between them they've got more than Storm, but Kara is falling back, possibly because he's worried about this from Jidoka, but if we look, we see that this is all a big horde of engineers. They've just come to eat the rocks. It's nothing that Kara needs to be worried about. Nonetheless, he's consolidating, and that means that Luca's army here might be at risk from Storm's comm, which is approaching. Lyoka falls back. How's the fight going for... Well, hold on though, we have another drop. I was about to go and look at Rezzy's drop, but we've got Locks sending out a drop to try and do exactly the same over here, but it's been seen. It lands with four engineers and it needs to immediately get building and possibly split so that one bomber can't take it because they're still in a position where one bomber could simply come and smack them. Though it looks like we're not getting a bomber response, we're getting a lab response from Jagged. And Jagged sends one single lab. In it comes. These guys, they're not helping. Well, now they're helping, but is it too late? That one singular lab shoots out one NG, shoots out most of another NG, and then Jagged brings in a bomber to finish it off. So, Lox's drop has been denied. Rezzy's drop, however, absolutely has not. And we have a swarm of dudes coming out of it. We now have four factories, two point defences. There is artillery in here, which will... I thought I saw an arty shot. Yes, there it is. There is artillery in here, which will make the point defences less useful, but there's still quite a bit of spam there. However, let's look in the middle, because Carrot is engaging Jijoka, and Storm is engaging Lyoka. Lyoka is losing dudes, though, and Karateka will need to swarm with this spamming support, but it's coming past these point defences of Jidoka's. However, he's trying to get in and raid. Kara drives some tanks past, but Storm now has quite the swarm coming in. And Storm's comm is coming in to defend as well. Lyoka falls back, Karateka brings his spam back, and his comm is waiting. He doesn't want to commit. If Storm advances too far forward, he might actually get pincered there, which will be a danger, but he's got spam to support. And... Here is Jijoka now with pillars on the field, also in support, and Karateka will have to fall back. Meanwhile, quick check over at Reddy's drop. I think this is going to fall, because he is, he's getting good amounts of eco, and it has paid for itself in that way. But this is 
quite an investment. In fact, look how much of those vast fields of rocks. This has basically just all been cleared by Rezzy. But his base is going to be taken out at last. That said, it also cost quite a lot from Protect to uh, protect his side, so... Ooh. But here are Luca and Karateka's units joining together and Storm is being forced to fall back. Huge drop of NGs to get some reclaim there from Relia. And this force looks unstoppable. I see some delicious little fire beaters scuttling around there. Are we going to see some fire beater snipes today? That would be quite fun. But if we are, it's not going to happen now because Storm has fallen well back. Now this is quite sneaky. We've got a naval yard already on the way to T2 being hidden by Storm in a corner. And that could be a little bit of fun if it can surprise Jagged, because Jagged's not going for any naval play here. So I could just come up here, a couple of Salem's walk on, take out all these mixes. Meanwhile, we have a push from Ephilis, but we also have Auroras supported by gunships sneaking across the water while Jadoka is distracted and Protect is distracted by this push here. And Karateka has joined in the fun with a bunch of rhinos. However, there's quite a lot of production here, and I see T3 here on the field for Protect, so this may be cleaned up and Lox sends a couple of ASFs and down got the gunships. So unfortunately for Ephilis, this raid isn't really going to achieve a great deal. In the middle we see that Jadoka also has T3 and has a Titan scuttling around there. T3 from Karateka. How are our other players doing tech-wise? Ephilis is focusing more on the air tech and I don't think he actually has any land tech at all. Obviously Rezzy and Jagged both at T3 air as I would imagine are their mirrors. And we've got T3 on the ground from Luka, so definitely we're going to be seeing a few high-powered land units mixed into this fight. And a big push from Protect. Is he going to sweep into Hitophilus or is he going to try and take this out? Now, Jagged is planning to go into the water, but I don't think he actually knows about this from storm so this could be a nasty surprise i don't think he'd be going for this if he knew about that i think he'd be trying to take that out with a wave of air first on this side the raid comes creeping in also we can't help but notice that there is a reasonable lead about what's that 100 mass give or take for team supper time but that could be about to change because this is an immense force coming across the water here, for, or indeed under the water in the case of the Othiums, from Protect. And Ethereus is diverting across. Rezzy's got himself a naval yard and is pumping out Salem's. He's also bringing in whalers into the fight. But that's just an immense amount which he's going to have to take down and it could spell trouble. But the invasion from Protect isn't all that Team Supper Time have to worry about. As we can see here, Jadoka is pushing in with a swarm of Titans and does it feel like Lyuka has a great deal to defend? Well, he's got bricks coming out down here. But will those couple of bricks be enough against this swarm of Titans? Meanwhile, look at this from Protect. This is Hawks. This is swathes and swathes of duels. There's air defense from both Ephilis and Luca um, resistance, but Lox has sent in a fleet of ASFs and will likely clean it up and we can see that Reddy just doesn't have the air to fight it. Meanwhile though, I'm surprised to see as many of those Titans going down to these bricks as I did because it looks like 
Jadoka has retreated a little bit with some of them up here and maybe going for a regroup. Well, now we can see that Jagged knows about Storm's naval base up here because he sent a frigate and found it being shot by a Destro. He presumably saw it on this solar that he has here. And streaming in frigates one by one isn't going to do much against the naval yard which has already produced a Destro. So he's going to have to work on that and he's working on that with an immense swarm of engineers. But back to the attack from Protect. Because this is huge. Look at this. Again, air units trickling out from Ithilis and Resi to defend against it. And now from Jagged as well, we have broadswords, we have whalers, we have spectres. But against this massive swarm of Othiums backed up by Zoe's, and where's the line of T2 point defence that Resi should, in my opinion, be putting up? He's putting up T1 things, but that's not going to stop this arty. And similarly, there was an attempt to put stuff up here from Ithilis, but what's it getting done? Quick check while, while, while Rezi gets Harvey dropped back here by Relia, but we don't have time to look at that because this is where we have to focus. Look at this. They're just swarming in to, into Rezi's air grid. They've swept across the map taking out his mexes, and now they're into his air grid. And if they set up a chain reaction here, this could be very painful indeed for Rezi. And he is putting up Cerberus turrets now, but that's too little and that's too late and BOOM! Rezi is taken down to just half health by the chain reaction. He reclaims this one to stop it exploding, but reclaiming that means he's standing still and he's actually under fire from the Zoe's and BOOM! Rezi is our first casualty of the game at 16 minutes. Team Supper Time's highest rated player, well one of the two with Ryuka. And he is out to a raid that just smashed straight across the map and into his base by Protect. Less of a raid, more of a full frontal invasion. And the combo has taken out a lot. The ever increasing number of gunships from Jagged has taken out a lot. But what a kill. That was immense. And look at the wave of destruction that... He's inflicted here and he's still creeping a few in. Maybe he's going to try and pop up the water here. And look at the eco. Team lunchtime are now 300 eco ahead of team supper time. That is a huge swing from supper time having a slight lead. And what are they going to do about it? Well, gunship seems to be the first order of the day. And that's going to clear up the Othians which remain above the water. Though these could still be a sneaky little threat. Look at them crawling along under the water where Jagged's gunships can't hit them. Meanwhile at the north, Luca is defending well with bricks against this push from Storm, but we have an emplacement being fitted with ravages that Jadoka is putting up to set up a little forward beachhead here, and although bricks are tasty and tough, against Jadoka's shielded titans and ravagers. I don't know who my money's on with these ravagers back here as well. My money for this particular engagement might be on Jadoka and I think Ryuka might have to fall back. He's breaking through the shields though but with these further back ravagers continuing to lay down the damage he's going to lose a lot even if he overruns Jidoka to the base and this will help Jidoka. Lox is bringing in strats and look at the damage those strats are doing. Look at the wrecks that we're seeing exploding on the ground there as those strats deal out some hurt. That's pretty painful and having done their work the strats fall back. Karateka has brought in mobile arty to defend the position and we can see it firing there but in the distance we can see that Relia has got a Tsar flying fortress up and running and he's bringing it forward. Is he going to use it for an assault or is he just going to use it to kite and hold back enemy air? We will have to see.
In the southern bay, the destroyers that were built by Resident have now been passed on to Jagged are doing a reasonable job of bombarding the stuff here and they're not holding the tech back though and Othium's, the torps aren't great, they were buffed a little while ago but they still look great. I don't know if that's going to be going for tech's way or Jagged's but while the Othium's under the water are having fun there, look at this factory emplacement going up for Protect. There's a few Othium's in here and they're only T1, the production areas. Is he going to tech them up or is he just going to go straight for, well mainly he's going for engineers at the moment, we'll have to see how that turns out. One of those destroyers has been whittled down quite a bit and of course those harbors we mentioned they have cleaned out a bit here. Are they going to be able to get in, in range of this factory? I don't think so and the gunships from Athelis are probably going to clear them up but they've done some damage so... Meanwhile the Othiums rather than trying to take out the destroyers which have top defense and tops of their own are trying to just go straight for the naval yard and that's something that they might get. Meanwhile Jagged sends some dudes to clean up the factories that Protect has dropped here. And he's going to get a few of them. There was some flat there, but he's worked through it. But this is just barely holding Team Lunchtime back, and Team Supper Time really needs to recolonize this area. Jagged has a couple of enemies coming out to do it. But is that going to be enough, or will that 400 eco lead that Team Lunchtime have just sweep the floor? We're going to have to see. We have an attempted strat snipe here by Locks coming around the top left, but it's been seen. Jagged's bringing in the ASFs, and down they go. Speaking of that eco, let's have an eco check quite a lot of spending from Relia and look at that that is pro balance on the on the power like I've said before I would I would just want some storage there just in case or drop it. but he's he's managing it perfectly protect also spending a lot slightly more power production but very good from Jadoka Lots of spending from Storm, and how is Lox doing? Well, Lox is quite well balanced, so he's got 16,000 mass in storage I might want to spend. As for Team Supper Time, Jagged actually overflowing. Jagged, my dude. I know, I, on the one hand, he has inherited quite a lot, and I don't know how I'd be doing in his situation. I'd probably be mass stolen because I wouldn't have 500 eco, because my eco often sucks. But he really needs to spend that 46,000 mass he has in storage and was overflowing. Luca, good balance. Karateka, lovely balance. Ruddy's dead. And Ithilis, also a reasonable balance. Again, and very nice on the power, I like that. But that lead for Team Lunchtime has just increased. They're now 700 mass ahead. And you're thinking, is there any way that Team Serpentine can come back from that? If there is here focusing on his eco by going for the Raz and the A-Raz, that will, that will help. But meanwhile, Relia has just finished a nuke launcher. Do we see any anti-nukes in Team Sucker Time's base? I do see one there and it's already loaded for Jagged, so that's going to be nice. I'm not seeing anti-nukes for Karateka and I'm not seeing any for Lyuka either. So they'll have to scout that and get it defended against. Looks like we're lining up for a big fight here in the middle though. We have a Mega coming in from Lyuka, and we have a Fatty coming in from Tadoka. And both sides, of course, have hordes upon hordes of spam. Now, if the Mega gets in range of the Fatty, then the Mega wins. But if the Fatty kites the Mega, then the Fatty wins. And we're seeing some good kiting action there from Tadoka. 
who is falling back with the fatty and letting it bombard the mega while the mega remains out of range and with this emplacement here and this horde of Percy's it's not going to be easy for supper time to get themselves in and on this fatty that said Karateka is also bringing in a mega Kara, if you watch this, tell me, is it meant to be Karate Car or Karateka or what? How am I supposed to pronounce your name? Please tell me. And Kara is forced to fall back by the fatty, but this is quite the push coming in from Luca and it's managed to get past. Also, we've got a drop of Percy's from Jagged that could add to the fun. Oh, that's not fun for Jagged. It just gets swept out of the sky by various ASFs before it has a chance to land. But speaking of ASFs, we've got an air fight going down in the south. The Tsar has been taken out, but between them, Relia and Lox have flattened Jagged's air. So, Team Lunchtime now have air supremacy. And sure, they've dumped 25,000 mass on the doorstep. 25, another 15 or so around there. So there's maybe 40,000 mass there for Jagged to pick up. But he's got to convert that mass into ASFs. And look at this lead. On the other hand, see these huge, huge grids of mass fabs? couple of hits on them and they could be toast and this mega from Luca is still coming in is it going to get any real damage down spectres from Relia in defense but that's a lot of bricks they've got to work through and of course the mega although we now have two fatties from Jidoka in range of that mega dropping far on it. This HQ would be a lovely kill if Luca could get his hands on it. But he's prefer to go for the power and he does get the power which is nice. I do please Luca focus down his HQ that would be amazing for you. Ooh, one of them, two of the mech grids go up in smoke, that's nice. But, while all that's been going on, we have a bunch of Othiums sneaking out into the back of Jagged's base that have just come out of the water. However, Jagged has a fatty and he's brought it back to defend. So we might lose a little bit here, that mech is going down. But overall, I think that Jagged's going to be safe. And on this side, one of the Megas goes down, Kara's brought in another Mega, but against these two fatties plus this wave of gunships from Lox, I think that that Mega is not long for this world, and Jagged has successfully defended. And indeed it is going to die, the Mega boldly fires until the last, but then crashes down in a heap of rubber. So where does that leave us? Well, where does it leave Aetherius, more to the point, who has a swarm of Othiums coming in across from Protect, backed up by a very significant wave of broadswords from Lox. And is this going to be enough to just wipe Aetherius off his forward position? It feels like it might be, you know. There is an another Mega on its way here from Karateka. <coughs> but, one Mega against that many gunships, I, my money would be on the gunships, and with these Othiums in support, there is a bit of flak in there, but not a great deal, to be honest. However, it's the gunships doing the majority of the damage at the moment. And here comes the Mega to defend, but wh what's he got left to defend? Meanwhile, there goes Relia's nuke. And we'll have to see what happens to that in a moment. 
looking at its course on the minimap here, I think it's going for Lyuka. Ooh, is Jagged about to lose his air all over again? He pulls back, which is nice, and doesn't lose everything, and Lux doesn't want to fly too much over this flak. Is Karateka going to be in a position to defend? He's put up... Ooh, I see an arsewasher. So, poor old Luca might be in for it, but look at that shadow we see coming in there. The arsewasher is heading... Boom, poor old Luca. That's painful. Straight for Ethelis base. Boom! Look at the brutality as the arsewasher takes a hit. Jagged dives on it and down it goes. But at what cost? Jagged is going to have his air cleaned up again. These gunships are just getting out for basically free. Actually, not quite free. And Ethelis does have his anti nuke still up and running, though it isn't yet loaded. And he also doesn't really have the mass to load it. He's only got 70 coming in now. And the eco lead for Team Lunchtime remains. Well, that's a, a thousand. A thousand eco leads. Now, we've seen a couple of comebacks from that sort of level of deficiency recently. But is this going to be another of them? How do you get back from being a thousand eco down? Meanwhile, Jidoka's fatties are pushing in with a chicken from Protect and with some Sera mobile shields and flak to support the amount of flak. Oh, and a GC from Storm. This is this is a significant force, and I'm not sure what Luca is going to be able to do about this. We see in the notifications there that um, Jagged has a Novax, which could take the fight to the enemy base, but the fight is already dangerously close to his friend's base in terms of all of this. Meanwhile, a little bit of sort going down there in the chat as Aurelius just says, can we recall? He gave the Tsar to Lox, hoping that Lox would use it to farm the enemy air, and all that happened was Lox didn't use it, so now um, really is unhappy about that. But I wouldn't be saying, can we recall, if I had this going in. Sure, the chicken's down, and the GC is actually still up, but look at the bombardment that these fatties are doing, and look at these Othiums coming in from the side. But we've got multiple Megas converging from the Suppertime team and it looks like they might be able to hold and if Jagged's having power trouble that would be a good chance for them to go and take these boys down. But Karateka doesn't feel he's in a position to attack and his Mega is taking just free damage from those fatties and that's why he feels he needs it to defend against this push and I don't blame him oh oh do you see that nuke notification that is 45 nearly 55,000 mass there 15,000 mass from really the cost of a nuke to take 55,000 mass that team supper time would otherwise be able to eat so all of this, all of this delicious, edible goodies for Team Supper Time wiped out. There's still actually 2,900 of the GC left, but, you know, that's basically nothing. More pushes from Protect down here. And Jagger's defending. But there's nothing really in this area left to defend. Look at this open, broken no man's land with no eco for Team Supper Time whatsoever. Jack has dropped a few boys in here, but they're being cleaned up and then getting a little bit of damage done, but not much. Meanwhile, where are those fatties from Judoka? Well, they're actually retreating. I feel that after that nuke and after the experimental battle here, there's enough for Team lunchtime to just 
charge in. Are we going to see that? Meanwhile, though, the Novax from Jagged is targeting this unprotected air grid from Relia, and if he can make it go up, that would be an immense victory. And I don't know if Relia's noticed. Well, now he has. But a superbly timed reclaim there stopped that P-Gen exploding. And so, instead of a chain reaction, we just saw one P-Gen die. Meanwhile, Luca is sneaking a Megalith into this bay up here and using its torpedoes to try and take out the emplacements that Storm has got in the water there. And he could also pop it out and raid quite well here. But meanwhile, we have another Arsewasher coming in from Protect. It drops its spawn. Boom. Not a great deal of damage from the first bomb, but you know, reasonable amount. And it falls back to safety before Jagged's air can come and wipe it out. How's that air grid doing? Well, there are now shields going up, and with that shield taking the place of the lost pigeon, I think that that Novax will not be getting any more traction for poor old Jagged. Where's it gone? Oh, it's over here now. Is it trying to pick up exposed mixes? That would be a good use for it, one of the best uses for a Novax. Yeah, look, it's been shooting down on this, and it's taken, taking it out. Yes. Good use of the Novax. Meanwhile, Luca is bringing his Mega out of the water here, and it is taking out mexes belonging to Storm. Lots of tasty prizes within its reach, and not really much that Storm's got to stop it. I notice that Luca isn't bringing it far from the water in case he has to retreat should a wave of gunships come, but he's also sending a bunch of bricks across the water, which will definitely be a good support. And speaking of that wave of gunships, here it comes, a bunch of restorers from Relia. In the south, we have a big push of dudes coming in, and the Three Megas is a nice defense, but the Washer comes in to well wash them. And um, Jack is going to try and take it out. I think he's going to succeed. He does. Where's Lox's air? Lox's air needs to protect it, is 100% complaining that that would be the perfect place for an air fight with all the flak he's got there. But Lox didn't take it, and so Jack got out having killed the Washer for free. And he's complaining about this, the Mavor that Lox is building down here. Nice Ma Novax damage from Jagged, and he may get more in that area. And sure, a Mavor would be nice, but what's he going to do with it? Really, are complaining that a Mavor is the least useful XP to go here. A Paragon would have been better, he thinks. A Scathis would have been better. And who am I to argue with him? Yeah, look at that Novax. That shield will be going up too late to save these T3 Mexes. That Jagged is just popping. So, good play from Jagged there. Meanwhile, this wall of fatties in the middle from Jadoka is a barrier that, despite his continued mega production, Karateka just can't get through. How is he going to break this stalemate? Now, a nuke might not be a bad idea. If he can nuke the fatties and then push in with his land army, that would be rather nice. And Where's the nearest nuke defense? I'm not seeing one there. Jidoka probably has one. That's that I haven't seen one. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. But nuking here would be lovely, and maybe that's what T3 
team at supper time should be doing. And another nuke comes out and unfortunately for team supper time they're not taking my advice but team at lunchtime is that nuke is going right for Karateka's army and I don't think there's any SMD near enough to stop it. There are multiple Omegas now, four of them, and Omega actually has enough hit points that a nuke doesn't kill it on a direct hit. But it will definitely make the work easier for Jadoka's fat boys. Look at the beauty with which they are kiting. Down comes the nuke and boom, look at that mega shedding hit points. Luca will tell he says protect. He is a Rusky and look at this. He's not wrong. Luca is almost finished on the laser and he's probably going to go straight for the teleporter. Is he? Is he? Going to let me down there Luca? Well we'll check back on him in a bit and see if he's gone for the teleporter. Meanwhile the Mavor of which Raelia was complaining earlier has been finished and Lox is cranking up that great big stick to point it at Team Supper Time. Boom and it fires. Meanwhile I see Lox is going for tactical missile and an unusual choice at this stage of the game. We'll check back on it later. And he's going for... Is... Is Lux going to try for a Telly Billy? That would be pretty fun if he did. Now, I often complain about Cybrons doing exactly what Lyuka was doing right now. Uh, but so somehow a UEF doing a Telly Billy doesn't feel quite the same, does it? Look at that, he's going for the teleporter. And Lyuka hasn't yet gone for the teleporter, but he might be at risk of a stray Mavor shell. The Mavor is currently targeting the air grid for Jagged. I think it might actually be targeting that SMD right there, which would be a lovely pickup if he could. But Jagged is going to suffer a lot of damage here. Boom! That is painful. And Jagged really needs to shield this SMD, otherwise he's going to be in a bit of trouble. And his shield pops back up, but where are the other shields, my dude? Karateka wisely hiding in the water, and where is Ryuka going? There's also an SMD here, which is being pointed out as a target, but Jagged is still up and he's putting up more shields, which in my opinion is extremely wise indeed. Meanwhile, we have a telly. Lox has started his telly into the water and he's going to pop out and he's going to try and billy the base of Jagged. Will he succeed? Meanwhile, there's a huge megalith push coming forward here. Look at all these megas everywhere. But will the fatties be enough to defend? Because there were just heaps and heaps of fatties. Out comes the billy. The billy is going straight for the air grid here. Will it be successful? Nope. Zap. It's been countered and Lox decides that he does not wish to stay around, especially as Karateka has seen him and is building torpedo launchers, so Lox just beams out. After all that, the Telly Billy was a little bit of a letdown, maybe. Meanwhile, is this gonna... Ooh, this is a huge XP push, but... Four Megas and a GC, but there's no support for it, and this immense wave of Restorers and Broadswords comes in to protect it. 
They dodge back a little bit and I think that Rayleigh is trying to lure in Jagged so he engages over the flag and indeed he does and I can't help but feel that this is going to be not one little bit pleasant for Jagged as his air is getting mashed by Rayleigh's and by Tech's flag and meanwhile the gunships are just going to town unopposed on the experimenters. That is, that is painful. Actually, I say that, but Jagged's still got a decent amount of air, but it's not enough to deal with this. Maybe Jagged is of the opinion that it was worth losing all those XPs in order to be able to take out some of the air and generally get this position back. Meanwhile, back to Jagged's base. How much damage has that Mavor done? Well, look at that. That It's smashing through the base. And we look at it just in time to see a horrific explosion as heaps and heaps of it go up in flames. That said, though, despite this Mavor damage, and Luca has got that tele maser now and is going for gun, despite all that damage, Team Supper Time are actually catching up a bit in Eco somehow. And maybe it doesn't matter if they lose their base if they've got enough Raz SCUs about and they can just build stuff on the front lines and push in. And they have actually technically got map control by a tiny margin at the moment. But are they going to be able to capitalize on it? That's a lot of XPs from it's a lot of fatties from Jadoka and there are more being assembled all the time and it just doesn't feel like Karateka or Lyuka have enough to just push in and break this front line Meanwhile, what have we got? Luca not going anywhere just yet. And now he's under the Mabel fire. Luca is but his comments and his comments here, this will be a lovely target for the Mavor. Five T3 cap mexes and a com or unshielded and maybe a bit of air grid damage as well. But at the moment, oh I see, he's trying to take out the SCU production in order to cripple Supper Time's eco. Because Supper Time has a game, they're only a hundred mass different in it now. Shoot green SMD, then nuke it says protect. Where's the SMD? Well, it's presumably... Ooh, look at these Raz SCUs taking an awful lot of damage from the Mabel. Ow! Chain reaction! Up go a huge bunch of Raz SCUs in a Mabel hit, and if you were Karateka, you would be just feeling that pain right now. In the middle, the bombardment continues. and the attrition in the middle is just relentless but with all these fatties I just have the feeling that Jadoka could be pushing a little bit more I think he's got enough there now to break in and do the deed take out the team meanwhile Luka has Telly to here wonder what he's planning to and as yet more ooh look at the SCU pain as Mavor after Mavor shell takes them out and this is going to be crushing Karateko, well I say it's going to be crushing Karateko's eco but he's still got enough just on the ground generally about, he's got 500 mass per tick coming in so and in fact look at that, Team Supper Time have actually overtaken Team Lunchtime in eco, how I don't know given that they're under literal Mavor fire and have had half their bases shot to pieces but they've done it and Luca is building a Scathis under the water, trying to be sneaky here, and he'll then try and pop it out and open fire. 
but I think that's dangerous. I think that could easily be seen and taken out, and maybe a ground fire could actually take it out. Meanwhile, the shield has gone down over Jagged's Com, and the Mavor hits are falling. Jagged is on half health, and he's going to be on worse than that. If another hit or two arrives, he is fleeing. Where's he heading? I reckon he's heading for the water. Yes, he is. The shots smack down around him but now they're not doing a great deal of damage and the shields are beginning to go up but a nuke takes off and it heads for here this SMD is actually mostly loaded I think that that SMD there will catch the nuke and if so that would be quite the reprieve for team supper time meanwhile we have fatties firing both ways now as Jagged is producing them over here but that's a lot of supporting units coming in from Jidoka. In comes that nuke. Is it going to get stopped? Is my core correct? No, it's getting through and Athelis is going to go up in smoke. Kaboom, Athelis dies and... We are left with just three players against the five on the on the lunchtime team, but Luca has got a change of plan. He's going for the torpedo and it cannot have escaped his attention that all five enemy comms are in the water here. Could this be the turnaround, the comeback that we have been waiting for? Is Luca just going to get a big heap of torpedo snipes off, kill the enemy team, and claim it back for team supper time? That would be hilarious. It's building slowly, but he's swarming in a bunch of engineers to assist. Meanwhile, Jidoka is sending his Percy's through the northern bay while a nuke aims to take out this army. And we're going to have to watch this for a moment. I'm going to have to watch all of this. Look at this horde of bricks. Boom. And down it goes. And suddenly... And that, and that washer just gets away for free. Meanwhile, the Percy's come popping out. And there is a fat boy here that can defend. Really, also just spamming a few zoos in from these factories. But while that fat boy's here, it's not defending against this. And this fat boy is no more as rarely as Nuke takes it out. Kill their satellite. It's still farming value, it says um, rarely, and he's not wrong. It's pootling around. Where's it gone? Can't see it. Maybe he just did kill it. Nope, it's still there. And then kill their Scathis, so they know about the Scathis. This is a huge investment. The Scathis is 67% done, and if they Novax it out... But we have multiple Novaxes from Lox firing on the base. He's going to try and ground fire the Scathis, but I think it's too deep for that to be of any use. And I think it will need the Mavor ground firing to take it out. Meanwhile, Jidoka's Perseus have come out of the water and there is a fatty defending here. But that fatty means that there's no defense against these four fatties plus mega plus monkey plus two more fatties. Six, seven, eight fatties. Let's look at that. Eight fatties from Jidoka. Plus now two washes from Protect. I think it's all going to come down to the success of the Tele Snipe by Luke, he's put up a sonar so we can see where they are. The Mavor is now ground firing the Scathis, which is on 94%. Oh, if he loses it now, this is going to be 100% brute. And he loses it. 94% on a Scathis, and it just died. Imagine the pain. Poor old Lyoka. Oof. Surely there's no way back. 
the wave the huge wave of fatties and look at all those factories that have been queued up by locks to support the fatties the megas and everything with spam it's brutal and another nuke goes off where's that one headed oh but i see a tele order we have to look at this in comes Luca. Where is he going to do it? Is this going to be a mighty cleanup for Luca after it looked like all was lost for his team? Place your bets now, guys. You know how I'll ever come back. And he's in. The torpedoes fire. Immediately, he starts building torpedo launches in order to support him. Lox isn't sure what to do, and he fouls the billy. He just fouls the billy, point blank. Boom. Luke's dead. Ha! You thought he was going to have a huge comeback. You thought it was going to be an epic torpedo snipe on all the comms, and she just gets billied. He just pops out and gets billied. Boom. Luke's dead. Uh, I put that up so much, and he died so quickly. Uh, that was great. I love it. And now it's just... What happened to Karateka? Did he resign? Did he get Mavos sniped? I actually have no idea what happened to Karateka. I've gone Garlem, Mr. Conkiller. Tell me in the comments below, please, if you saw what happened. But now it's just Jagged. And Jagged is on the back foot. He's a thousand mass behind. He's got a couple of... He's got three washes now blowing up his dudes. He's got a Maver firing on him, he's got four sats firing on him. There is no way that Jagged is getting out of this, and yet he still does not resign. He is going to make them fight for it. Experimenters swarm in from all sides. Five satellites from Lords. And Jagged hides in the water at the back, under a shield, with T3 on his comm. He's going to be a very hard comm to kill, or would be, if it weren't for the fact that there are vast amounts of experimenters. I mean, like, a couple of torpedo bombs, or even if Zar would do the trick, because of course Zar has torpedoes. But... Everything is just being systematically eaten by Team Lunchtime as Jagged hides away. And now they have a 2,000 mass lead and all five of them are alive against just Jagged. I mean, I may as well start saying, tell me what you thought of this game in the comments below, what a game, etc, etc, because there's only one way this is going. How's he going to die, do you think? Maver or Groundfire? Wave of top bombers. Washer ground fire. Three washers could just come out here and ground fire him. That would be a. That would be an option. He just wants to make them work for it. Oh, I said three washers. Make that four. <laughs> and this this one little air rich kill he's got in the corner is nuked. He gets ground fired. Actually, but actually he doesn't get ground fired. Just what he was building does. But now they must know that he is there. So there were a lot of. of chances for it to swing one way or the other early on. I think Joker could have pushed with his fat boys earlier. I think that one key moment was when Luca didn't advance out of the water with his mega and his bricks. This could be it. Double ground fire from the from the washers. Takes him down to 1900. Boom. Down he goes. And at last the game is over. Jagged alt tabbed half an hour ago it suggests Storm and he could be right, you know. So yeah, I think that 
Luca could have made much more of a difference with that Mega and Bricks had he pushed out here, or found some way to support them with AA, maybe even a Mega just laying an egg, and maybe Jagged dropping in a few, a few T3 anti-airs by Continental, but that was such a war of attrition, and that and that Billy death to at the end, that was hilarious. It looked like it was going to be such a beautiful comeback, and it just boom, billied. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.